Hey, this is Mike, and I just want to show you how easy it is to create your own graphics and images for your e-learning courses. Um, and I really like this pictogram style, which is really just basic, simple representation of real objects. And unless you've been living under a rock somewhere, you've probably seen these types of images in infographics, um, tons of those that use these type of pictogram images. They're popular for use in explainer videos. Um, obviously, you've probably seen them on highway signs and uh, airport signs and, and everything else like that. So they're really, really useful and super, super simple. Matter of fact, so simple that I would say anybody can create these. To show you how easy this is, I will recreate this. I'm just going to go and grab my circle tool here, put a circle there for the head. I'll go grab my rounded rectangle, size it about like that. Now with my arms and legs, I'm going to grab that same rounded rectangle. And I'm just going to take this little adjustment uh, icon here and drag that as far as I can to the right. And that gives me that fully rounded shape on both edges. So now I'm just going to use my rotation handle here rotate my arm for this side and I'm gonna make a copy I'll rotate it around for the other side and get that positioned and then I'm just gonna make one more copy for the first leg another copy for the second leg and I'm gonna just move those into position um, one nice tip for that is you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard Sometimes that's easier to get a little more precise placement, at least for me, than uh, what it is to be able to get using the mouse. So once you get that just the way you like it there, that's a pretty quick and, and dirty version of that. Now I can fill those in, turn off the outlines if I want, and I've got a character there in less than 30 seconds. And then, once you get started, if you need certain types of clothing or other kind of accessories like safety equipment or whatever the case may be, it's really simple to add those by just adding some other additional basic shapes. So, I've kind of simulated a hard hat here with a orange half circle. Uh, I've created a tie here. That's just a combination of triangles that are sized and rotated. And then when a Put them all together it sort of looks like a tie right so between the addition of other shapes and then adding in colors you can kind of add some more richness and, and some more details very very simply then once you get a little bit of practice you know you can kind of add some additional shapes and you can pose these characters so again these are all just basic shapes inserted rotated and sized to get the effect that you're after. You can even get some pretty good detailed type images here. So for this example, this came from a crane operator lift signals course, and we couldn't find any of the right images from any stock photo site. So we decided to build our own, and, and this is what we came up with, and I think they turned out pretty well here. So we've got just basic shapes, different types of, of hard hats. Here you can see, I think that's a pretty good looking representation of a hand. We've got a couple of different versions of hands here. And you know, once you add in some arrows to indicate motion, uh, you've got some pretty nice, really useful images that you can use. Now, once you start to look at things as being comprised of just basic shapes, you can start to make just about anything you can imagine. So here's an example of an overhead crane that we built. And again, if we break these down, it's just some squares and rectangles and circles and lines combined to make that uh, nice looking shape. One thing that I have found helpful is once you get this all set up and arranged the way you like it, it's helpful to either group it which we can do here by doing a right click and group. 
So now once I move that, I don't have to worry about getting all of the little small individual parts and pieces. Another advantage of that is I can now still go back in. So for instance, if I wanted to color one of those individual components, I can go back in there and I can color that in. I don't lose the ability to do that. Um, the other alternative, instead of grouping, is you can use PowerPoint's merge shape tools. Uh, I've put mine here on the quick access toolbar because I use them so much. Uh, one of the nice things here I can do if I use this shape union tool is now I've actually merged that all into a single shape. Now I can't go back in and individually edit or modify the individual parts but what I can do is now as I can treat this as if it's one whole complete shape. So if I give this for instance a gradient fill, notice it fills everything as one individual shape instead of a collection of multiple ones. So advantages to both of those approaches. The other thing you can do using those merge shape tools is you can not only merge them but you can also subtract and combine them in different ways. So in this example I will use the shape combine tool and I've sort of done some subtracting out of where that shape was overlaid and you can really do some really nice creative uh, shape creation using those merge tools. Uh, another great and helpful tip is once you get those things set up the way you like them, uh, if you're going to reuse those especially, it's helpful to save them as a picture. So what I can do for that is I'm going to right click, I'll save it as a picture. Let's call this uh, Safety Man. And now I can create a whole library of those that I can use in other courses or in other places anytime I want and when I want to go grab one of those I can just pull that in just like any other regular picture and there you go you're off to the races. The last thing which is really helpful to get you if you ever need some really unique shapes so sometimes a circle and a square just doesn't quite cut it so when you encounter those kinds of situations what you can do is use the ability of PowerPoint to edit individual points on shapes. So I'm just going to right click on the shape and I can go to edit points. So now I can kind of move these around and get some really unique shapes. Or in the case of this little drinking fountain here, what I wanted to do was get that rounded edge on one side. So you can also add additional points or take points off, whatever the case may be and then you can kind of move those and get a shape and then I can also change what kind of a point that is so I'm going to change that to a smooth point and now I can kind of arrange drag that around you know I've got some ability to adjust the curves so really nice thing to be able to do that and with those tools you can get that in just about any shape that you can imagine and really simple thing to do right inside PowerPoint. So, so there you go. There's a few tips to hopefully help you create some images that you can use in your courses. Uh, they don't have to be complicated. Uh, as long as they can clearly communicate your message, they're good enough. And I hope that helps.